Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. We are starting with the first module of our deep learning course and this module is about deep learning and neural network basics. And the first video in this module is a gentle introduction to deep learning. So in this video, let's try to understand what is meant by deep learning, what is meant by a neural network, what are all the different applications of uh, deep learning that we have and the different kinds of neural networks that we have and also the different frameworks that are being used for building deep learning systems and also the frameworks that we will be using for this particular course. So this is the agenda for this video and let's get started. So first of all, let's try to understand what is meant by this deep learning. So deep learning is a subfield of machine learning that uses artificial neural networks to learn from the data. So the keywords to note here are artificial neural networks and data. So you have a data set and we use artificial neural networks and these neural networks are trained using this data. So this networks try to find the pattern present in this data so that it can make future prediction. So this is all about deep learning. And by this point, I'm assuming that you know what is meant by machine learning. If not, I'll just give you a quick definition of this. So in machine learning, we have several models. And again, with these models, uh, we train these models with a certain set of data, right? So these models also try to find the pattern present in this data and make future prediction. The only difference between machine learning and deep learning is that in the case of deep learning, we are talking only about artificial neural networks. Whereas in the case of machine learning, the model can be a logistic regression or it can be a support vector machine or it can be a random forest. When you use artificial neural network, we call that as deep learning. But the core concept is same. That's why we say deep learning is a subfield of machine learning. Okay. So the main thing to understand here is deep learning is all about artificial neural networks, which we use to learn from the data. Okay. So where does this term neural networks come from? So the artificial neural networks are inspired from the neural networks that we have in our brain, in our body. So this is how a neuron would look like, or we also call this as a nerve cell. And a nerve cell has some important, uh, you know, parts like a dendrite, which are these finger-like projections. And you have a cell nucleus, which is the most important part of the cell. And you have a long tail, which is called as an axon. And you also have this axon terminal. So this is the example of a neuron, right? And each neuron in our body is connected to uh, other neurons as well. So we have this dendrites, right? So that dend uh, dendrites of another neuron is connected to the axon terminal of this neuron and this network kind of goes on. So these neurons play a critical role on how the information is being passed to our brain and how this uh, commands given by the brain is being sent to the different parts of the body. So there are like a bold topic of biology there but I think this is sufficient for us. So similarly we have neural networks that are uh, inspired from these uh, you know biological neural networks that we have in our body. So here these circles represent our artificial neurons so just like the neurons that we have here. So each neuron uh, our, each neuron is connected to other neurons so this forms a network and we call this as artificial neural network and when we uh, have a neural network we have different layers to it so you can see the different layers present here so we have input layer and we have multiple hidden layers and, and output layer so uh, you can have only one input layer and one output layer so input layer is the one where we pass our data and output layer is the one where we get our prediction and in between you have your hidden layers it's not that you should have only two hidden layers you can have three four five or even hundred hidden layers so it doesn't matter so it depends on your problem but these are the standard layers. So you have uh, uh, input layer, output layer and your hidden layers. So each neuron in this layer is connected to each neuron in the previous layer. So you can see this, uh, you know, lines. So if you see this neuron, so this kind of get information from this neuron, this neuron and this neuron. So this is what these lines mean. And this is what we call as deep neural network. Okay, so we also call these individual neurons as perceptrons. So this circle, each circle represent a neuron. So these are our biological neurons. These are uh, the artificial neuron that we are talking about. So how your data is being processed in these neurons. So we also call this as uh, perceptron. So we have like multiple perceptrons or multiple neurons in a single layer. Right. And the main thing is, as I've told you, each neuron in a layer is connected to each neuron of the previous layer. Right. And uh, in the next video, we will also try to understand how this neural network works and, and what's like really happening behind this. So all those things we will discuss in the next video. And 
again in this video let's again uh, move to the topics like what are the applications of deep learning and other things so to start with let's try to understand what are all the applications that we have in the case of health care right so health care is an important domain where we are seeing uh, a lot of applications of deep learning so to name a few we have like radiology applications so radiology is all about uh, giving scans of patients trying to understand what those scan represent is there any abnormalities or so on so in the case of health care for these uh, problems we can build computer vision problems using cnn where these cnns will be trained on your scanned images so once it understand how a scanned image of a brain or a whatever part uh, you know looks like it can see or it can find if there is some abnormality or if there is some uh, you know cyst that is present there something it can be a clot or anything right so this is one example of cnn being used or you can also use neural networks for early predictions of some diseases or you can you also have like several nlp tasks which is basically you know text based problems that can be solved using the clinical notes that you have in a hospital right so these are few examples and we also have uh, the field of autonomous cars so we all we all know tesla cars and other autonomous cars that that doesn't need that much input from a driver right so these autonomous cars use deep learning extensively it's not just for one task but it uses neural networks and deep learning for multiple tasks so for example let's say if a, a autonomous car has like several cameras and sensors associated to it right so let's say camera it basically clicks the images and this these images are processed and some predictions are made some decisions are made and also for making these decisions we also use reinforcement learning some neural networks will also be used here so this is like another example and we also have computer vision and the applications in computer visions like there are like a way ton of examples in this case so you have image classification you have object recognition so image classification is just when you want to say whether a particular image has a cat or a dog in it and you also have object detection where you say whether a particular object is present in an image and where it is present in an image so similarly a different type of uh, you know uh, applications can be done using this computer vision problems and also you have natural language processing where the system tries to understand what a human says and respond accordingly so we have like chatbots like uh, a google assistant alexa and so on and we also have systems like chat gpt right so these are some of the main applications of deep learning and there are also much more applications of this so in this slide let's try to understand what are all the main types of neural networks that we often work on okay so this is not a strict ca classification or categories but again these are like uh, major domains that we will work on in this course and in any deep learning work so convolutional neural networks as i've told you convolutional neural networks works really well for computer vision problems and, and image recognition tasks right so the one example that is given here is like building a convolutional neural network to say whether uh, image represents a cat or a dog so in the Convolutional neural networks, again, it is a neural network. The only difference is that we have, uh, you know, uh, convolutional layers, pooling layers, and so on. So it's just like we add few more layers to the neural network that we have, and, and it can uh, predict your images like more accurately right so this is like uh, uh you know a very high level uh, introduction to convolutional neural networks but again there are like much more to it so cnns are mainly used for your uh, computer vision tasks and we also have recurrent neural networks we also call this as rnn and these recurrent neurons recurrent neural networks perform way better in the case of text problems and text data sets right so nlp we have a lot of uh, applications that are being built using these rnn right so for computer vision we mainly go with cnns and for uh, nlp and text based uh, data sets we go with recurrent neural networks and there are also other category of models that we call as gans or generative adversarial networks where uh, one example of this gans is that they can generate new image so once you train with train this uh, gans with some uh, image data it can kind of generate images that are similar to this uh, you know data set so this is like uh, the other type of models that we have and it's it's not that uh, you know that much used for text generation right so we have chat gpt and other uh, systems that can like uh, 
you know generate text not only chat gpt we also have like several uh, text generation uh, deep learning application but actually they don't use gans because we have other models that performs like way better in the case of text problem so we will discuss about that later in the course but you can think about uh, gans being mainly used for image and video generation tasks okay and then we also have transfer learning right so what is meant by this transfer learning is we use a pre trained model for a different tasks right so we have worked on machine learning so we take a data set we train a model and we make prediction and for a different problem we take another data set we uh, you know train it with a fresh model and we make prediction whereas in the case of transfer learning if you see here so this is the usual approach that we have so we have a data set and a model and we have data set 2 and the model 2 whereas in the case of transfer learning you have a data set and this data set is being fed to a model and this model preserves the knowledge of this data preserves the knowledge of whatever it has learned from this data by fitting to it and this knowledge can be used to make uh, predictions on a different data set so or in other words we use this pre trained model that kind of you know retains the knowledge that it has gained from this first task and it can be trained on top of the second data set right so this is what we actually do in most of the cases because if you want to train a neural network with a uh, enormous amount of data let's say 10 million data or 100 million data it it's going to take a lot of resources which we may not be able to afford right so in that cases we go with a transfer learning approach where we take a pre trained model uh, and and train it on a very smaller data set and it also give you like way better performance than uh, you know training it with custom built model from scratch so in some cases of course we go with uh, you know models from scratch and in, in most cases we also go with transfer learning approach so this is other thing that i wanted to tell you and again this is not a strict categories i just wanted to give you a broad domain of what are what are the types of neural networks that we often work on okay so it's not like transfer learning can be used only for numerical data sets or image data sets so we have transfer learning or pre trained models for computer vision problems we also have uh, you know pre trained models for uh, nlp tasks and so on so in our course we will discuss about all these things in detail both theoretically and hands on as well okay and in the final slide of this video i just want you want to introduce you to the frameworks that we use for deep learning so the one that's widely used is tensorflow so the other widely used library is pytorch so this tensorflow is developed by google and pytorch is developed by facebook so tensorflow also has the advantage of using tpus tpus are nothing but your tensor processing unit so you would have also found this in google collab so i mean uh, these are like built with that in mind so a tpu kind of provides uh, you know way higher performance compared to your graphic processing units and and central processing or your cpus basically right so tensorflow is the main deep learning library that we will also use in our uh, deep learning course and again pytorch i'll try to Uh, you know add this in some use cases as well so pytorch is again also widely used and we also have other library called as microsoft cognitive toolkit so we call this as cntk again but in this course you won't see anything that's related to cntk and we have keras so keras it's it's not a standalone library so it has like certain libraries in its backend so say for example keras has tensorflow and cntk in its backend so the advantage of keras is that building neural networks is much easier in keras compared to like tensorflow but it kind of uses tensorflow only so in the back end it has tensorflow only the implementation part is like much easier so it has like tensorflow cntk and and few other library as well so in our course we will mainly use tensorflow and keras so i'll try to add pytorch wherever possible okay so this is what i wanted to share uh, with you in this particular video and in the next video let's try to understand how a neural network actually works okay so that is uh, that is all from my end and i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching